What's going on, Fight Fans? It's your host, Sebastian, and welcome back to the Boxing Tip. Now, every time I see this guy fight, he just convinces me that much more that he is the real threat at 115 pounds. Not too, I think just a little earlier today, he dispatches Kohi Kono, who is a top 10 ranked 115 pounder, in about six rounds. He knocks him down once with a beautiful left hook during left hook exchanges with uh kohi kono and then the second knockdown which was the final knockdown when the fight was stopped landed a beautiful right uppercut that just rocked kono's world he was done he was done for but to me the beauty of this fight wasn't so much you know that it was a competitive fight you know on paper going in or anything like that what impressed me the most was Naoya Inu's body punching. I mean, round, during every, I would say the first, first, second, third, maybe the fourth round, Naoya Inu was just hammering Kona with these fucking vicious body punches. Like every time he landed a body punch, the dude would just bend over or back up. I mean, this guy has so much power and you could tell that by watching the fight, he lets that real power go to the body and then He'll finish you off upstairs he was just breaking Kono down and Kono's a tough guy you know uh pressure pressure fighter type style you know really aggressive come forward a lot of awkward you know upper body and head movement uh to, you know get him on the inside he did land a couple of good shots on Naoya Inu but Naoya Inu's def defense is just so effective with you know with his foot uh his foot his footwork you know using his feet to get out of you know to avoid some of that pressure blocking punches man that was just a huge thing for him he, i mean using his arms to block punches using his gloves to block punches doing some catch and shoot kind of counters i i saw one that was just amazing kono threw a body punch and noe new kind of just dipped down and put his elbow there the punch hit naoe new's arm and then he would just come back with this vicious left hook to the body and it buckled uh, Kono, I, I can't remember exactly which round. I want to say it was the third round, but he just showed a lot of versatility, man. I mean, he was kind of boxing on the outside using his jab, showed a lot of good upper body and head movement, was rolling punches off of his shoulder, slipping punches, throwing the counter, fading punches, throwing the counter, using his feet to kind of set up little angles for him to attack at. He wouldn't let the pressure fighter back him up the whole fight. He was actually backing up the, you know, the aggressor and Kono up you know a good portion of the time with his jab you know he was showing a really good jab yeah, this dude's just impressive man he has the tools he really does have a lot of tools in the ring he's not just a one-dimensional fighter and that's why to me he is the real threat at 115 pounds he is a title holder but he isn't recognized as being the lineal champion and the two top guys in the division you know I, which is uh Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez and uh Carlos Quadras now you already know how I feel about those two guys I feel they are both A-level fighters I do I'm a big fan of both guys but something just seems so scary about Naoya Inu every time I watch him fight just his body punching alone I know Gonzalez has been hurt to the body before his body punch going up Naoya against Naoya Inu for Gonzalez would he would really have to focus on trying to take away Naoya Inu's body punching. He's just so, he's such a scary little motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? Such a mean little shit, and just so powerful, but yet so intelligent in the ring, and how he does things, you know, he's truly a student of the game, he shows a lot of everything, you know, it's just kind of hard to, to pinpoint one thing that he does very well, when he does a number of things very well. The fundamentals are there those are mastered his fundamentals are mastered and then he does a lot more advanced things like his you know his counter punching or you know more intermediate things like his counter punching and, you know using his feet to set up positions and then you know into the more advanced stuff like catching and shooting and you know what i'm saying stuff like that and the punch selection being able to punch you know in combination yet keeping your balance you know stuff like that you know all the way from the novice the fundamentals up to the you know more advanced stuff that you do inside of the ring man Noe Noe Inu is just showing a little bit of everything so 
that's a scary thing. And then to add on his punching power that he's carried up. This is a second division, mind you. Um, I think he was the previous record holder for fewest fights for two world titles and two divisions. And then Lomachenko came, I think it was 10 fights he got that. And then Lomachenko beat that record with seven fights, uh, knocking out Roman Martinez, so or Rocky Martinez. So, I mean, man, this kid, dude, I mean, this dude is just fucking, he's talented and he's scary. If the Quadras and Gonzalez fight doesn't happen, which I hear there's a lot of complications going on with that, I think Gonzalez wants a little bit more money. I think he's starting to kind of, trying to double down. He knows that he's in a division with some with some good fighters, man. You know, Quadras, they had a fight already. Really close fight. Well, I mean, close in terms of the punishment. You know what I'm saying? Taking the punishment. Obviously, Gonzalez's face marked up, but against a fighter like Quadras, man, it doesn't really surprise me. And then you got Naoi Inu, who's just kind of beating up, you know, well, first he takes a title at the division, and then now he's beating top 10, you know, ranked fighters, and just making it look pretty simple. Now, if the Quadras rematch with Gonzalez doesn't happen, I would love to see either one of those two let this motherfucker get his chance. If you can beat him, maybe you'll stop his forward momentum. But it looks like it may be a hostile takeover for some of the lower weight divisions. Being that Naoi Inu is just looking so goddamn dominant, man. So, just so promising. He passes the eye test, no doubt. And his resume is just starting to get that much better. So, those guys, if they don't want to fight each other, or if they can't make the fight for whatever reason, let Naoi Inu get his chance. Let him get a crack at one of you guys. Unify the title with him, if you can. Uh, Chocolatito and that's you know directed towards him unify or quadris man maybe you could do something about this you maybe you can get another title shot for a different belt at no way new and maybe you can stop the monster at 115 pounds you know what i'm saying but like I said in a previous video, I think Naoi Inu has the stuff to beat both of those guys. I personally do think so. But on the flip side, I think both of those guys also have the stuff to beat Naoi Inu. So that's why it makes that's why I always talk about the 115 pound division being one of the most interesting divisions, being that you got just, you know, not including, you know, like Estrada or anything, or Arroyo, you know what I'm saying? Some other decent fighters. But just these three guys alone make that division interesting. And then if you want to throw Estrada in the mix, who Gonzalez already has a win over, you know, he's a great fighter too. That makes it that much more interesting. And then add on the fact that Naoi Inu just dispatched a top 10 ranked 115 pounder like it was nothing. Man, it's just, it's such a, it, there's a lot of chemistry going on in that division. We just need to see the right reaction. If, if for some reason the fight, the rematch doesn't get made between Gonzalez and Quadras, I mean, I'm not going to say that's a good thing because I really want to see those two go at it in a rematch. That was uh, my pick for 2016's Fighter of the Year, um, just on my own personal preference. Naoi Inu is, but I mean, if the, if the rematch doesn't happen, then it is kind of good in a way because now the door is open for Naoi Inu to get a crack at either Estrada, Quadras, or Gonzalez. Uh, there's been, I don't know if it's a rumor or if it's factual, I'm not too sure, but I remember it seeing it somewhere that Gonzalez already turned down a fight for Naoi Inu, but I'm not sure exactly how true or what the actual situation was about that. So maybe there was some reason for the fight not ma being made or whatever. All I know is that Naoi Inu wants Gonzalez. I know he wants Gonzalez because Naoi Inu, I think, has a goal that he wants to be a pound for pound. A pound for pounder, at least in the top 10. Pound for pound somewhere. I know he breached the pound for pound list on ring magazines for a little bit there. I think he just, I think he was just ranked as low as number 10 for a short period of time. And then, you know, he got replaced, I think, by Carl Frampton, actually. Or somebody else. Somebody else took his spot. But I think he's trying to really crack into the pound for pound. I think that's what makes Gonzalez his primary target. And I think he is confident enough that he can beat him or he can beat anybody at 115 pounds. 
if he beats Estrada, Quadras, or Gonzalez, he is a top, in my opinion, will be in my top 10 pound for pound for sure. I don't really have a list made, but if I did make a list, his ass is going on top 10 for sure. So, but, um, I mean, man, you guys, you guys should really go and look at this guy's highlights. Go watch his fights and then just see what he's doing to these guys, man. He's, and see what he does in the ring. What he does in the ring is just brilliant, man. A combination of fucking the most vicious body punching, one of the most vicious body punches out there, and a technician, you know, combined with the technician that he is, you know, and his ability in the ring makes for such an interesting fighter, man. And it, and it really spices up the lower weight classes. And Naoya knew, I mean, he seems like a like a little bit taller kid. Um, he's not super big frame. This might not be his last stop in the, you know, in terms of moving up a weight. He could jump up to 118 pounds or, you know, to bantam weight, or he could jump up to maybe super bantam weight to 122 if his body can handle it. And then there's some more real competition there. You know, I mean, there's obviously Guillermo Rigondeaux, which I'm not going to really start going into depth about those two fighting yet because the, you know, the weight gap is a little big right now. And not to mention Guillermo Rigondeaux is a masterful boxer. So there's, I would say that he wouldn't be the favorite to beat Rigo, but nevertheless, I still feel like if his body can handle the weight, it could be competitive in a way. So also, uh, Jonathan Guzman's at 122 pounds, Scott Quigg. Is at 122 pounds. Nonito Donaire, Jesse Magdaleno, who just beat Donaire for a title. Uh, Jesus Cuellar, or no, I think he actually is at 126. He's somewhere around there. I'm pretty sure he's 122 pounds. I think Abner Mars is another 122 pounder, or he might be 126. I know they they jump from fucking weight classes. I, you know, Donaire went up to 126, came back down. I think Abner Mares went up to 126 and then went back down i know leo santa cruz went up to 126 so that that range of weights are a little finicky i'm gonna have to kind of look back and double check but nevertheless if naoya new can get up into those 122 to 126 maybe 122 at the most maybe you know weight division there's some good fights for him there nevertheless so but i guess it's just a wait and see thing for now you know, we had Quadras, Gonzalez this year. We possibly are getting a rematch. And we had Naoya Inu just dispatch a top 10, top 10, 115 pounder. So it's hopefully in 2017, it blows up in that, in that weight division. Hopefully either one of those three fighters faces each other. If any of them goes and any, if any of them other than face, I put it this way, right? If Quadras and Gonzalez don't fight I think they need to fight Anu either one of them I don't want to see them fight any other old Jack it should be Naoya Anu for either one of them Naoya Anu on the other hand I want to see him if he can't get either one of those two I want to see him get Estrada and see what he does to him but that's a wait and see thing so hopefully it blows up but let me know what you guys think man go watch this fight I think it's on I watched it on YouTube I couldn't catch it live obviously it was streamed in Japan and another thing too I want to talk about real quick Japan has like the best fucking commentary ever I don't understand a lick of Japanese all I can know all I know is I could hear them say their names every now and again and I could hear them say like WBA and shit like that talk really fast but they just man they made the fight exciting I love the Japanese commentary even though I have no idea what they're saying they, they're just so energetic and then another thing i wanted to point out when naoi knew and I, it was just a little bit of comedy you know about the fight naoi knew he knocked him down the first time and then he went and jumped back on the on the uh, he went and jumped in the corner on the turnbuckle and stood up and was like cheering him on like he was like Ko, uh, kono wasn't gonna continue and then he turns back around and he sees kono standing up and robert bird's like all right go ahead and fight and then he just went right back to work like nothing ever happened so that was fucking cool man i don't know that was just a little cool moment in the fight something that i enjoyed of i enjoyed a bit but let me know what you guys think man let me know what you guys think about this weight division let me know what you guys think about naoi inu go watch him fight or go watch his highlights at the least and then just kind of share your thoughts to me about what you think about the fucking little destroyer you know what i'm saying i, I always said this on my last video it ain't a little drama show it's the little destroyer so but let me know what you guys think about them. Also, uh, share the video with your boxing homies. Subscribe to the channel, guys. 
I know y'all liking my shit, man. Y'all, y'all, I know some of you guys out there like my shit. So come subscribe, man. Come fuck with me. And then introduce somebody to boxing, man. They already knew he's a good, he's a good boxer, you know, to get one of your homies put on, you know, show him they already knew. The dude's knocking out basically everybody he fights. I think only one of his fights didn't go, uh, went the distance. So, you know, show him they already knew. And then I just want to, you know, thank everybody in advance for watching. I will talk to you guys on the next one. Sebastian from the Boxing Tips signing out. Peace.